YouTube Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Gavin Your Secrets of Longevity.com. This is a video response to an article that was featured in the Global Mail about 10 days ago. I've been trying to get it at it for about a week now and just had various things coming up and I couldn't quite get down to making this video. Anyways, this is a response to an article promoting and pushing flu vaccines in this uh, peak time of flu, the flu season. This year it's been a bit later. Uh, according to the statistics and what I want to say first of all is that there is absolutely rhetoric on both the pro-vaccine and anti-vaccine camps that we see online all the time and it, it just becomes something that personally I don't try to engage in too often because it just becomes a, uh, a problem of having to point out the logical fallacies that people blatantly use all the time against each other and both sides are equally uh, at fault here and there's all this dismissive hand waving and snub nosing and holier than thou type attitudes that are taken in the presentation of their points and they need to be good points first of all because a lot of the points in and of themselves are fallacies uh, and I'll acknowledge that full on for either side I'm unbiased in that sense but this video I hope is a breath of fresh air I just want to look at uh, some studies, there'll be links in the menu below the first link and I'm just going to number them off as I go through speaking here. Uh, the first one is going to be the article I'm responding to, so it's the Globe Mail article by Andre Picard. And I want to start off by saying that I could point out that the Globe Mail uh, up until 2010 had an 85% shareholder of Thomson Reuters which also has a pharmaceutical based research company and that's a pretty strong bias, but that's, that's appeal to bias. I'll give a journalist at the Global Mail the credit for doing what he does and just focusing on his facts and not the media establishment that he's connected to, but it has to be said, and you can point that out about me as well. I've got ties to health product companies that I'm going to be talking about at the end of the video. Just a heads up there, and uh, the appeal to bias isn't a reason to dismiss someone's argument, but it should give you uh, some skepticism. Be skeptical of me by all means, uh, but to me, the constant pushing of pharmaceutical ideology in the global mail that I see uh, kind of sickens me that there's never that much sort of lifestyle based. Uh, yes, there's your general eat whole grains and exercise type ideas, but it's still a very uh, prim and proper, you know, largely already accepted type ideology that we see in the lifestyle section of the promotion of health in, in that newspaper. And just for those of you who don't know, the Globe Mail is a very large nationally distributed newspaper in Canada, one of the largest. So I want to start by just reading some uh, quotes that I'll be responding to. I'm not going to be quoting each and every aspect of uh, Andre's article, but the first part, just to kind of give you an idea of the tone of it, which was a bit authoritative, which comes with the medical paradigm it enjoys putting itself in a place of power and authority and dismissive hand-waving away the uh, opposing ideas. So fully a third of those who won't get a shot, or almost a fifth of the adult population, and this is referring to this year's flu shot, make the choice because they think vaccines are dangerous, said Lauren Bozanoff, president of Forum Research, which conducted the poll. This is an unusually high level of misinformation, he added. So of course, this isn't uh, Andre's wording, this is the quote of Lauren Bozanoff, but this really illustrates that attitude that I'm talking about. I get that researchers aren't in the place of going into big long debates, but it's just this conclusive, you know, high level of misinformation. There's absolutely no attempt made to even look into why there might be some opposition to uh, the general, very wide-ranging idea of vaccines and whether they're all bad or some are good or some are bad, etc. Next, the next quote I have here is, fear of vaccines is most common among those with low incomes and less, well, education. So that's a bit of a strange thing to point out, as if there's trying to be an insinuation there with uh, income and education. Personally, what I've seen is some of the anti-vax people are some of the most educated and take the most time into uh, looking into research. Even if they're not the best critical thinkers, as most public seems to be, uh, they actually take spend more time looking into this stuff, which you have to give them credit for. And yes, there's absolutely pro-vaccine people who have a very great ability at doing their research and backing up their points, but 
there is much more of a herd mentality, <laughs> no pun intended with the herd immunity type concept of vaccines, but there's a herd mentality when it comes to being pro-vaccination. And that's just because the mainstream medical model is a mainstream thing. So among the people who uh, are against the anti-vax ideology and their points, there seems to be, and I'm not sure if Andre Picard falls into the category or not, I'm not going to try and create a straw man argument for his stance, but there's often this perception that, you know, these people are, like was said in the article, low income, low education, and they might even project a bit of a sort of backwoods hippie couple who aren't vaccinating their child and just feed them spirulina and walk around barefoot all day and grow their own vegetables. I don't know. So that's a bit of a mischaracterization of uh, anti-vaccination people, I believe, because there is a lot of mainstream uh, researchers and medical uh, journal articles and studies that have uh, opposed the ideas of vaccines as well. And that's just completely dismissed and ignored by the pro-vaccine groups and uh, authors and journalists and researchers. So link number two below is an article in the British Medical Journal. I linked to this in a past video so you might be familiar with it. And it's a researcher that is pointing out how flu vaccines, not all vaccines, this is just on flu vaccines, is in his perception, and this is a prominent doctor, are simply overmarketed and pushed from a place of pure profit. They don't have any legitimate value to any great degree. And what we see with it being pushed so strongly is an effect of the marketing, uh, the fact that this industry wants you to be getting it done. Now the third link below is an article that talks about why a lot of flu vaccines have been ineffective and it just goes down and works out the sort of chance way that uh, vaccines are developed because they're trying to take a guess at what strains are going to be present in the upcoming year and it takes time to manufacture the vaccine and distribute it. So a lot of years the vaccines are very inefficient or ineffective because they're inoculating you against something that's not even happening that year or only partially happening. And uh, that's an important thing to take into consideration because although this year is the H1N1 flu and there's vaccines available for that and they're said to be more effective because they know for sure that, that this is what is happening, this is, hasn't been the case every year. They haven't been effective. And the mentality of pe in people is that they see that it hasn't been effective so you can't get down on people for this year who aren't getting it done because they've seen the effects of it last year. Yes, you might have the data saying this year it's actually proving to be effective so far, uh, but, you know, not everyone's seeing every stage of all the information out on vaccines. They have multiple years of experience of what's happened with vaccinations and how ineffective they have been, so they don't want to participate because it's uh, a problem with consistency just because this year's uh, it's doing well in terms of the, the approach that the mainstream medical system is taking doesn't mean that everyone's hearing that information. So I'll be making some points on the issue of this year's flu vaccine, which is why I wanted to make this video, uh, but we're going to talk a little bit more about why people are anti-vaccine, uh, not just anti-flu vaccine, just as a buffer to give a better background on this, because uh, within this article in the Global Mail, which has this tone that's critical of people who are anti-flu vaccine, but it's part of a larger discussion on vaccines in general. So I'd like to highlight some points that are backed up by research as to why people have been anti-vaccines in general, uh, which is completely legitimate. If the research is out there, just because there's two sides or more, one side has more than the other and they're taking the stance of the side that has less funding and so there's less of the research, uh, you can't be so dismissive of that because it's based in sound science. So links number four and five are both PDFs that uh, illustrate how the diseases that we think have been, at least the mainstream thinks, have been eradicated by vaccines actually haven't been. Yes, there's going to be both sides to this discussion, and I'm not trying to get into that. I'm just trying to say that there is evidence to say that medical practices such as vaccinations haven't been effective for polio, whooping cough, all these things. And then the second one uh, also shows that with graphs. And with each of those graphs, which is for a whole host of different illnesses, it has the references on there. So people are also distrustful of vaccines for damn good reasons. If you add on top of that the various whistleblowers that have emerged, out of the industry and haven't been reported in the mainstream media, 
Uh, no wonder there's a growing anti-vax movement. If everything was all bright and floral in terms of the research being just very hard and just giving one answer, uh, some upfront honesty for, by the pharmaceutical companies that there is differing research might actually lend some credibility to uh, people's perception of this. Mainstream media just helps propagate this unbiased reporting and that would be a way that they could help resolve the issue if they really wanted to have more people getting vaccines. The more honest an industry is uh, about the failings that they have and the problems within the products that they're currently doling out, the more willing people are going to be able to trust them. So link number six below is uh, a natural news article, a PDF on their site about how Merck knowingly falsified its mumps vaccine test results. Uh, say former Merck virologist Stephen Crawling and Joan Wilowczowski. And as far as I know, this wasn't talked about on mainstream media, but this happened. Uh, the UK government has covered up the results and suppressed vaccine research for over 30 years. That's link number seven below. Vaccines have resoundingly been found through multiple studies and multiple types of vaccines to increase mortality rates in children. That's link number eight below. That is a very concerning one and a big factor in uh, the anti-vax movement basing largely on not wanting kids to have these huge doses of vaccines. And that, of course, transfers on to flu vaccines later in life. Or you can just take into account the well-known extensive amounts of laws that have been passed in the U.S. Uh, and other countries that protect vaccine manufacturers from lawsuits of vaccine injury. If vaccines were so safe, why would there need to be legislation put in place? Why would these laws be sneakily passed to uh, financially protect the companies? That, that's expensive for companies to do. They wouldn't do it unless they had to because they were going to lose more through, through uh, lawsuits. And there's actually been settled lawsuits uh, for vaccine injury. That means courts of law in the U.S. have admitted that parents who have claimed that their child was injured by a vaccine have been able to prove in a court of law that that happened. They had enough evidence to support that. So those are just a few points that give background to what people think about vaccines in general. And that then is, of course, going to change their response to flu vaccines. So just because someone's anti-flu vaccine, they're not taking this position from some vacuum of lack of information. They're basing it on uh, an ongoing uh, understanding that they have of the medical climate and what's being pushed and what are the financial incentives? What are all these things? Um, even if there are claimed benefits to them, there's a lot of hazards, and it's you know understanding the balance of uh, negatives to positives. And even if there is strong positives, if there's a certain degree of negatives, it uh, it it's becomes a lottery, and people don't like to gamble with their health. So on to the current uh, flu shot issue for this year. When H1N1 happened a few years ago. The flu vaccines from the years previous to that, 08, 09, likely made Canadians more susceptible to the H1N1 flu, even uh, when they had been vaccinated against it. So that's link number nine below. Uh, these were correlative studies, but there were three of them because it was such an interesting finding. And then they replicated the study on ferrets, and it corroborated the studies. That's in a lab setting where they could really control it. And that's link number 10 below, and I'm surprised you didn't consider that one when it was actually in the Globe and Mail. So link number 10 below is in the Globe and Mail, and it clearly shows that um, people who had had the flu vaccine from the year prior were more likely to get H1N1, even if they were vaccinated against H1N1 that year afterwards. So people this year getting it, if they had, had flu vaccines from previous years, they might be more susceptible to getting it. So in my opinion, it's completely unnecessary to get vaccinated for any kind of flu. There's really not enough research and reason to take it, in my opinion. And I always take the stance that there needs to be research to uh, convince us to, to take it. We don't just take it unless there's research that gives us evidence against it taking it. So uh, the burden of proof is on those who are giving out the vaccines, uh, but it should be third parties doing the research and we just don't see enough of that happening. There's a whole host of better ways of preventing uh, a basic illness, that is the flu, uh, through natural means, through whole foods, through herbs, through supplements, and 
while there's tons of different remedies out there, I'm just going to talk about a few that are my favorite. This is going to be linked number 11 below, but there's a study that clearly showed that colostrum, bovine colostrum, was three times more effective than a conventional flu vaccine at preventing the flu. So if you follow my channel, you've probably heard me talk about this a lot because it's uh, just amazing how effective uh, this food is. It's a superfood in that sense. Extremely immune boosting, but also the growth factors are excellent for growing babies, children, athletes for repairing injuries. Um, this is what the product looks like. It's a white powder, so it's powdered colostrum. It's uh, dried using a air drying process. It does heat it up, but it doesn't go beyond a point. That would destroy some of those immune modulating qualities. It's also one of the most complete foods on the planet, so you're getting a whole host of vitamins, nutrients, minerals, uh, proteins, fatty acids, all these beneficial things for the whole body. For link number 12 below, I'll actually stick uh, a link to an article I wrote about colostrum. If you want to learn more about it, then consider picking some up. Please do use my link, which is below the series of numbered links, uh, because purchases through that help me out in continuing to put out this well-researched, informative content. So another huge thing for boosting immunity is, of course, medicinal mushrooms. These are the most potent immune modulating herbs on the planet. Uh, they work on many aspects of the immune system. The immune system isn't just one thing that needs to be increased. There's many different types of cells that uh, track down and destroy foreign invading microbes in our body. And Sir Thrival's reishi and chaga tinctures, dual extracted tinctures, are highly effective for raising that immunity, but also bringing it down where it's overactive and perhaps a bit inflammatory in our body. Uh, but overall, most people need some good immune-boosting things happening, especially around this time of year, and uh, especially when there's flus going around. So Thrival also just came out with a new product, four new products actually, that are instant immune-modulating mushroom teas. Um, they're in these little boxes, and there's 20 packs per box. So, for instance, if we look at the instant shiitake, it looks like just a little tea bag packet, although it's just powder in there. What I do is I pour about a third of a cup of hot water in there. I pour the packet in there, immediately stir it so that it starts dissolving into the hot water, and then add more hot water to it. And basically it's a tea that was made and has been dehydrated down to a powder and these crystals that are easily then mixed into a tea. It's not uh, going to leave sediment in it. It's actually going to completely disperse into the tea because it's uh, an extract. So these are sugar-free, vegan, no gluten or soy, no artificial flavors or colors. And there's chaga, shiitake, maitake, and lion's mane. And those are all highly immune modulating. You can research each one to know which one might be best for you. Or you can get a few of these to know what each one's about. Um, just to read the ingredients of one of them as an example, it's not just the mushrooms because they can be very strong flavored and some people are off put by that. Uh, but for instance, the chaga one has the chaga extract, about 50%, mint leaf, star anise, uh, stevia leaf, and that's it. So it has a sweetness from the stevia, and the flavors of the star anise and mint leaf go very well with the chaga. The lion's mane also has the same combination of stevia, mint leaf, and star anise. The shiitake one's different. It's got shizandra, dandelion, and rosehip. And then the maitake has uh, ginger, rosehip, and stevia in it. So two are similar in the other ingredients that are in there. The other two have slightly different flavors tailored to uh, synergize well with the flavors of the mushrooms and their extract. So I just got these and they're delicious. It's a very easy and efficient way of getting more immune modulating mushrooms into our body. So there are alternatives. They're effective alternatives. We know these things work. The science is out on these things. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Perhaps let me know your favorite anti-flu uh, regimen to prevent yourself getting sick in the winter, whether it's a flu or cold or these other things. And like, favorite, and share the video if you feel so inclined. Don't forget to uh, check out those links below. Go through the links for any products you wish to purchase or check out. And with that, I'll talk to you next time. Take care and embrace life without limits.